guys, it's great to see you again. I'm Miss Shirley and I'll be your visual artist for this lesson. Today we're going to talk about Eloise Reneff and we're going to do an artwork inspired by her. What you're going to need for today, a sheet of paper, pencil, eraser, and a cup of crayons. Eloise Reneff is a British artist, designer, and illustrator from the south of England, currently living and working in Nottingham in the United Kingdom, or the UK. Here to the right is a picture of where the United Kingdom is, also known as UK in Europe. To the left is a close-up of England, showing Nottingham. Her background is in printed textiles, best known for her prints and designs of fabric, stationery, and homewares. Her work is based around her love of strong shapes, textured prints, dynamic color combinations, and crisp lines. She deals with patterns, repetition, and texture in her pieces. Trained as a print textile designer, Eloise Reneuf began her career in fashion in both London and New York. In 2000, she established her own stationery company, Eloise R. Designs, designing and publishing greeting cards for sale internationally. She also has created giftwares ranging far a leading UK gift wrap manufacturer. She designs work for organizations like UNICEF. She designs and sells her own limited edition prints and fabric accessories. Eloise teaches courses at Nottingham Trent University on fashion textiles. She does commission and licensing work for homewares, stationery and illustrations for clients like Target, Land of Nod, Uppercase Magazine, Betty and Dupree, and Query Publishing. Her first book was 20 Days to Draw a Tree, which led to Draw 500 Things from Nature, along with many stationery notes. Starting with hand-drawn, painted, or printed elements, she then develops images into collage, paintings, or digitally manipulated works. She places a strong emphasis on color, enjoying unusual combinations and contrasts. Eloise Reneuf uses natural elements, themes like flowers, leaves, trees, and clouds reoccurring in her work. It's simple modernized and reduced to the most basic elements, then re-enhanced with color, pattern, and texture. She began making prints in the autumn of 2010 after career break uh, to have children. Prints were a way of getting back into the flow of designing. Eloise works mostly in abstracts, reflecting influences from fashion, interiors, textiles, architecture, landscape, sculpture, ceramics, and graphic arts. Abstract art is not representing reality or looking real. It uses shapes, forms, colors, and texture. Her work also represents other disciplines, environments, concepts, and work practices she admires. She uses contemporary mid-century style, clean, simple lines inspired by nature, hand-drawn images with repeated elements of color, texture, and decorative pattern. She creates interesting moods with stormy weather blues and grays mixed with golden leaves. I'll repeat this again. Eloise Reneuf is inspired by things around her, found in nature. She is famous for repetition, patterns, leaves, and flowers. Her flowers are always circular and have an interesting pattern in a circular format. Okay, we're going to start our artwork. 
Uh, it's inspired by Eloise Renouf. And um, first thing we're going to do is you write your name on your paper. And I'm going to go ahead and use marker, of course. You have your pencil and your crayons. And um, we're going to be thinking about flowers. And like I said, she uses circular patterns. Um, so we're going to be thinking about circles. If you need any help with circles, um, you're very welcome to uh, use a, a, a pattern or a, I have a coaster or a I also have uh, caps you could use. You can put them anywhere as you'd like. doesn't matter. Start off with doing like two or three, and then you can keep adding. Remember our lines? We have straight line, curve line, wavy line, zigzag line, dotted line, and dashed line. We're going to use all of those in this project. Okay, so, uh, and also too, we're going to be doing this in a circular pattern. So you will see me turn my page quite a bit today. So uh, we're going to think about starting off with a circle. So I'm going to go ahead and start off a circle. And then you turn your page, it might make it easier for you. And the whole time, basically, I'm going to be turning my page. The whole time, I'm going to be turning my page. So that's one circle. And I'll, let's see, I'll put a circle down here. After you draw your original first circle of each flower with your pencil, if you decide it's how and where you like it, then trace it with your black crayon. Then you can use your black crayon to draw the rest of your details. There we go. It's a couple of circles. And we're gonna think of curves and straight lines. We're gonna use that the most, curves and straight lines. Let's see uh, what I like to do. So I'm gonna do a, a curve line here. I'll do, just keep doing curve lines all around. That's my little pattern I'm going to be working on. Curve lines and curve lines and curve lines. I'm going to just keep using curve lines. You could do um, V's if you want. If you like a straight line, change direction, straight line. I'm going to just do, keep going. See, sometimes I'll just jump across and, 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 and work. I'm going to just keep going the curve line here. Curve line, curve line, curve line. Some of my students like to think of working with and drawing gears and wheels in this project. Okay, so once I have the curve line, I'm going to go ahead and do straight line. Well, actually, it's going to be a slight, ever so slightly curved because I'm going around this one, actually. Now, when we're working on this project, if you want to draw a little circle inside there, you can. Inside each one of these little curves. You can work with bigger curve lines. See how I keep turning the paper? This makes it so much easier for this project. And let's see, I can go ahead and do another curve. Oh, actually a circle inside. There we go. And actually I'm gonna do another circle inside it. There we go. I'm going to do zigzag here. It's going to look almost like little triangles. It looks like a flower inside a flower. Have you ever picked up a flower and it looked like a flower inside a flower? 
There we go. And I'm gonna do some circles around here. You could do it on any flower you want. You don't have to look like mine. Just start filling it up full. Let's see, around each one, I'm gonna go ahead and do uh, a curve and a curve. Just like some little parentheses. This looks so cool once you're done with the project. I'm going to put a little circle in the inside. Tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and put some little circles. And I'm going to draw it with a line. There we go. All right. And let's see. Oh, I think I'm going to go ahead and do a... I'm going to put a spiral on the inside. You can put it on anywhere you want. Actually, I'm going to do this one coming out. See how I just did curves and I'm just turning my curves the other way? They can be facing inside or outside. Inside or outside. And I'm going to come around and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put straight lines. I kind of curve slightly, ever so slightly. Some of my students like to think of this as wheels. Gears. You ever played with bicycle wheels? That's what that kind of reminds you of, huh? Let's see, I'm going to put some sh straight lines coming out. Actually, I'm going to go all the way across it. That's how I find my halves, my half mark. Then I'm going to come and I'm going to put another couple of Eloise Rinoff. She's British from the UK. Also the same as uh, England. All right. Let's see. And I'm going to come back. I'm going to add more on here, too, I think. Or on this one. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and, yeah, I'm going to do one right here. There's my circles, actually. Okay, I'm gonna do another one. And let's 
Let's see, I'm going to do another smaller circle in here. About the size of a dime. I'm going to go across. There we go. I'm going to put circles across it. And then these I'm going to have going into my circle, almost. There we go. Let's see. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to put some curves. I'm going to do a big curve. Yep, a curve over there. Curve down here, a curve over here, and a curve. My curve's kind of cut off here. Curve. I'm gonna come straight into the flower. I think I might put some more into our flower. Now we're gonna think about flowers. And when we see flowers, sometimes there's a flower in the front, and sometimes there's a flower in the back. These flowers are in the front, and sometimes we have something in the back. I could put a wavy line, if I like, in between. I could add another one in between. I could do that. You kind of want to keep them about all the same size here. It's okay if it doesn't come out all the way, though. These are in the front. It's called, these are going to be in the foreground. In the front is the foreground. In the back is called the background. Have you ever taken a picture? And you, you, you can be in the foreground or in the back. These I'm going to go ahead and put kind of like a little arch to them. Now this plant, this one's going to be behind this one back here. So it's not going to show, the whole thing won't show. It's, it's going to be in the back of it. So this is, this one, the petal is in the background of this one. in the background, in the background, and then these we can't see because they're cut off. Okay, I think over here I'm gonna go ahead and do, there we go, same thing. I'm gonna bring it all the way around. I'll just keep looking for the middle. See how I just keep looking for the middle. I just keep looking for the middle. Keep looking for the middle. Keep looking for the middle. Keep looking for the middle.
Now I'm gonna go ahead and do one that's gonna go behind it. Now these petals are behind the front petals. So the front petals are in the foreground, the ones in the back are in the background. You've seen flowers like that. So some are in the foreground and the front and some are in the background. Like I said, same thing as in when you're taking pictures. Wherever you are, the setting you are, that's in the background. And if there's something in front of you, it's in the foreground. All right, let's see. I am going to go ahead and put a little circle on the inside. I'm going to do another circle. <laughs> and I'm going to do another circle. Now, Eloise Renoff's, um, Renoff's, excuse me, her artwork sometimes some of the flowers it's in a circular pattern but they could be um, more squarish just kind of rounded out remember seeing some of those i'm just putting straight lines here whatever kind of line you want you just fill in you're filling up your your flowers these are going to look so awesome once we have it and let's see we're going to think of the stem of the stalk and leaves that might possibly be there okay let's see i'm going to put one here so i'll put another one real close to it this one's going to have a bigger stalk but it's in the back so it's got to jump over the plant it's got to jump over the other one it's in the background it's behind it so it's got to jump over it okay this one's really thick so Okay, and then this one's going to have a little one. And this one here. Now I'm going to put a leaf that's kind of just a curve and a slight curve. I'm going to put uh, a curve and another curve here, but I'm going to keep going. I'd like to make them a little different from each other. Maybe I have one in the background of this one and it's from this one here. this is the same plant I would like to use the exact same type of leaf oh wait a minute there we go and let's see I could have something from behind this one I could have it coming from the top coming down oh yeah maybe so it's going to curve. There we go. That's a great big old leaf from the back of this one. And I'll tell you what, I'll put one on this side. A little bitty leaf. Maybe I could put part of one here. You decide where you think you want your leaves. That way we'll get to color them up. Now this, this if you have a lot of stuff on here, it's going to take a little longer to color. Of course, we won't necessarily be finished coloring. You'll have to finish coloring during a break or at home. But um, you see all these awesome lines. We use straight lines. We use curved lines. I kind of used a wavy line here. 
You zigzag. I didn't use dotted or dashed. You can put dotted or dashed. Look, I could put. I did use some dash. Look, because I did jump over. But I'm going to put some more dash lines. There's no wrong way. There we go. And then we'll start coloring it up. You decide how you want to do it. Let's see. I like to go ahead and put a, a trace. Sometimes I even draw it with these, but you drew, drew it with your pencil or your black crayon. And I like to do the same thing here. So you can use your pencil or your black crayon when you tracing over this. There we go. And we just color it up. another color in with that one. I'm going to do a blue-green coming right through it. Yeah. So I'll put a little blue-green in the center. And I'm going to go ahead and put light green around the outside. So you decide what kind of colors you want to use it. Well, let me show you one that I've done. There we go. See how we colored it up? And don't forget, if you can use the really side edge of your crayon, and you can go around the outside edges of everything. Okay. Remember, try not to, uh, if there's something in the back, you want to jump over what's in the front, what's ever in the foreground. So you have the background and the foreground. These are all kinds of shapes and colors. The foreground and the background. So continue working with your artwork. See how we color it sideways. The foreground and the background. This will be my sky. Just like I have this one colored up. I've really enjoyed working with you today. Take a moment, view your artwork. Turn and look at your neighbor's artwork. Notice the similarities and the differences between your artworks. Thanks for joining me today. We learned so many things. We talked about Eloise Reneuf and we created an artwork inspired by her. As you go through your week, um, notice the different kinds of plants you see. Flowers, trees. Think about ways you can create them with lines. Notice what's in the foreground. Notice what's in the background. The foreground is in front and the background is in back. Enjoy the rest of your day. I can't wait to see you next time.